whether or not human beings are capable of suffering and whatever suffer suffering is, how exactly is it instantiated in the human brain? So well, let me start with this. One of the examples I really like, I mentioned it already, is the color white. Um, because in the real world, the physical world, there's um, there's reflectance spectra everywhere, and some of those spectra are uneven, and some are much more even. Uh, and the very even ones, at least across the visible visible part of the spectrum, that's what we call white. And um, and that's not how the brain processes it. The brain says there's three color channels and a brightness channel. Actually, at some point, the brain recombines and turns it into four color channels, yellow, blue, red, and green, and then there's brightness. And when we look at something white, the model the brain constructs is very simple. It says all the color channels are down low and the brightness channel is up high. That's what white is. And of course, that's not what white is physically. It's a totally incoherent description of the color white. Um, Newton is the one who figured that out and figured out, no, white is a mixture of all wavelengths. So now we, uh, 300 years later, uh, we look at um, white and we all have this weird um, fractured way of understanding it because we've all gone to school. So we all know that white is a mixture of all colors. It's not true that it got purified or the contaminants got stripped out of it. We all know that, but that doesn't change the model that our visual system constructs. We're born with it. We can't, it's like, we don't have a top down intellectual way of fixing our visual system and it wouldn't do us any good anyway, because there's a good reason why the visual system simplifies the world so that we can process it with, with a limited amount of neural hardware. That's why it's so simple. Um, so we have a, a, a reflexive visual model which tells us that white is one thing, pure, clean, um, uncontaminated. And we have a intellectual model that we learned in school, which tells us that white is something else. Uh, it's a mixture of all things. It's the muddiest color there is. And we walk around happily with both of those in our head at the same time. And one does not negate the other. Um, they both exist at the same time in our heads and we have to deal with that. And everyone's okay with it because it's been hundreds of years now that we've been dealing with it. And we all got used to it. Um, that exact same way of thinking is going to have to apply to all aspects of consciousness, right? So you ask, well, do people really experience suffering? And there's this whole intellectual scientific way of understanding it that says, well, experience isn't really what we think it is. And it's computation and this and that, and this is all true, but no matter how much you understand that intellectually, it does not change the reflexive models, right? Those are still doing their thing. They're still building their things and, and pumping information through the rest of our brains. And so if someone takes a needle and stabs you, uh, you're still going to go, Hey, that hurt. Stop that. That's awful. I don't want that to happen to me. Like that's going to happen. And the emotional, um, associations, the emotional processing and all the emotional circuitry that people really don't understand, uh, that's going to get engaged. Um, so there's a, a version in which aesthetically people suffer. And there's a version in which intellectually, as we understand the computations, something much more sophisticated and materialistic is going on. So there's a scientific way of understanding it, but then there's the user way of understanding it. So I do not think that understanding it from the scientific perspective negates the user, um, suffering or joy or whatever, right? So do people suffer? Yeah, there's a sense in which people suffer. Of course, um, uh, pain is there. Um, I think that um, probably these mechanisms of attention and consciousness that we study, if they get damaged, and they do sometimes in people with uh, stroke damage, um, sometimes e e e that suffering you know, you, you can have a person that, that no longer feels pain that no longer suffers, um, that, you know, there's something as I've written about many times called hemispatial neglect, where half of space and half of your body kind of gets wiped from your awareness and you poke them with the pin and they might squirm, but they don't really know what happened or why. Um, 
Uh, and the brain is processing the information, but not in that particular way. Um, and so there's validity to the intellectual side that's getting away from the experience and the magicalism, but there's also validity to the, um, the user experience basically. And so, um, yeah, people can suffer, uh, animals can suffer. Um, yes. <laughs>